Hello again everyone and welcome back to the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage channel. Before you is the incomparable white brand model 644 sewing machine, a tour de force of all kinds of tricks and abilities uh, and complications. This machine is one of the few that uh, you are seeing that I did not purchase, I did not rescue. This is a machine that has been brought to me by someone who uh, saw one of my machines, uh, one of my listings that was posted, and asked me if I would be willing to give a try at getting it repaired. Uh, it has been repaired and serviced three times before, uh, some successfully, some not. The attention assembly was serviced, the motor and the belt were serviced. The machine has been cleaned and lubricated, and I can tell that the machine's been used. Uh, it's the only machine the owner has had and used for 20 years, and they use it a lot. Uh, the presser bar still works. It, the, the presser bar does not come up as high as it once did, but the spring, I checked it, and the spring is, is, is starting to, starting to you know, give up the ghost here. It's, it's still working. But um, you can find presser bar springs for singers. I have yet to successfully find one. But this functions. This is not the machine's main issue. The main problem is it does not make very good stitches. Why? Well, that's, that is the, the mystery. Here we go. Here is the sample of the fabric uh, that the owner made. And you can see there's sometimes you get good stitching and sometimes you get this you get uh, kind of a, a mess, right? It does a little bit of something that it bunches up. Uh, basically, the stitch length is not working properly. You can see it again on the line above. Stitch line right here. Uh, hopefully that shows up for you. Uh, anyway, so I was asked if I could take a look at it. Well, the first thing I had to do, and I guess you kind of call this the, the forensic of, trying to figure out why because the machine was stitching properly and then the last time the owner took it to a third place they wanted to have it cleaned in oil just you know tuned up because they were trying to maintain their machine as they've been told or, or as they were taught well someone uh, went through the entire machine they may have done a great job however when the machine got back it was doing this weird stitching thing it would not stitch so <clears throat> I went in and I tested and I looked and I looked for things that were jammed. I opened up the lid and I went in and took all of the mechanical um, <clears throat> pieces that are up there, checking them, make sure they were oiled. Some of them were dry, but they were moving, but I oiled them just in case. No change. Now, this machine is all steel in the bottom, all steel in the top, and um, now the hand wheel is plastic. You can't tell by tapping on it, but you get a magnet, you'll see. It's not aluminum, it's, it's plastic. There's a hairline crack in it, but it's 40-something years old. It still functions fine. I've, you know, I've seen that before. That is just, you know, the hand wheel is a pulley. It's under tension, it's under stress. And I get, you know, it's amazing to me that a plastic pulley lasted this long, and who knows how long it may continue. But that, again, is not our issue. So, what did I want to do? It wouldn't, and I, the other thing I noticed is, this uh, reverse lever, which works great now, was not working. It, it would just, it wouldn't do anything. Now, this machine, in addition to having a built-in buttonholer, which all, almost all of them have, or you could get them if you were willing to pay, a built-in buttonhole feature. It has, up here, it has a lot of decorative stitches in regular. They're all built in. And then down here, SS, SS stands for um, it should have been SOS because this machine would not stitch. Stretch stitch. And all of these patterns here, you may recognize the smocking pattern, which uh, I recognize from where I've done uh, a number of Kenmores with their stretch stitches. Now, the question was why? How could a machine that has been basically been used regularly end up in such a sad state? Well, you know the old Hippocratic Oath first do no harm that they use in medicine. Well, as I've mentioned to you all many times, if, if you're doing something for the first time and you're not sure, and I was, I've never worked on this model, you always tread lightly. Be very conservative with how you start moving things and taking them apart. Now, sometimes and very often when you're trying to remove a plate, which is obvious that it's designed to be removed because look, we've got 
we've got one, two, three, four access screws. The screws are there. We know it's designed to come out, but very often, if the knob is attached to something inside, there's a little set screw somewhere on the side, and you loosen it, you take the plastic cover off, and you can get behind it. Not so on this machine. There's a hole on this, this big dial that controls zigzag, but I am not convinced that it's actually, I haven't tried to take it off and didn't need to. But all of these buttons, uh, dials here, have no set screw. So if, this, if they're going to come out, you know, you can try popping out the cover, but this one does not come out. Someone has tried. And then I saw some scratches right in here. And I thought, hmm, okay, we better investigate a little bit more. Now, so what did I do? Well, I took the side cover off, which is just the cover for the motor. Um, a lot of machines uh, have this. Again, by this time, we don't have exposed motors anymore. We have uh, covers. I took the cover off, trying to see what I could see. Uh, didn't, really, didn't really help, but it was off in case I needed that angle. But again, once again, what are we going to do with this machine? And how are we going to get it to work? The reverse wasn't working. There's a set screw for the reverse knob. Of course, it's missing. So, got the four screws out, pulled this out, and it, and it came out maybe a, a half an inch or less, and it stopped. Well, what does that tell you? That means don't go any further until you figure out how to get it off. So, by having the side cover off, I got another set of hands, so there's two of us, and as I'm pulling, I notice that the panel will come off if, and only if, you have to uh, shift it. It actually has to be pulled out and then shifted and tilted a bit to get it out because it connects on the inside of the machine. It is designed to come out. But then I saw this, and this is what, um, well, actually, I take that back. I didn't see this yet, but I'm going to show it to you all anyway. Take a look at this. I'm going to zoom in. I want you to look at this plate that holds the knob. Look at it from the side. And if you do, you should notice, see if I can lower this a bit, you should notice that up here it's a lot tighter. But look at the gap. Look how it gets wider at the bottom. That means that this plate is not flat, but it was when it was installed in the factory. So when I went to take it off, I noticed something. It's very odd that the screws were not tight. Now they weren't really loose, but I could easily move them. They weren't, they weren't screws that have been sitting for 40 years untouched. I thought, okay, someone's taken these screws out, all right. And then um, I couldn't get it to work. I, I took it out, played with it, cleaned it, oiled it, didn't do squat. So put it back. On the third try, and this was the last try, I was going to have to give up. Uh, when I was putting it in, the other set of hands helping me kept trying to move uh, to get the reverse to, to do what, it, what it's designed to do. And this is what happened. Uh, when I put screws in, I typically try to get them all in, but I don't tighten one at a time. I gradually secure them down snug, kind of go in a clock or just a circular pattern. And I do this for the same reason you do that with lug nuts on a wheel. I just in case, you know, it's just a habit I have. Well, wouldn't you know that as I was doing this and I had the other set of hands pushing, it if I snug the screws down to where you would expect them to be, it wouldn't work. But when I backed out the tension on the lower screws, it started to work. Now, how bizarre is that? It is bizarre. And just by some luck, dumb, just 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 a dumb luck of accident here, I managed to realize why this wasn't working. The prior person that worked on this machine, there's a scratch here, and, I'm, and I've got a theory, and I, I'm going to toss it out there. I have an idea. They went here, and they forced it out. And when they did that, they bent it. Now remember, this plate is flat. It was flat in the factory. It fit beautifully. And it has mechanical pieces attached to it that interact with other mechanical pieces. And don't you know, if you take it from being flat and you warp it, you bend it, you throw off the design. Now, when I say design, I mean the engineers planned for this machine to work a certain way. 
right? And things are very, very, uh, uh, they're very precise, not digitally precise, but they're certainly precise enough that if you start messing with the, with the vertical plane of this plate, you're going to impact it. That's the best theory I have, because every time I try to, 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 to drive these screws all the way in to, to try to get this plate to be straight, it, they, it, the screws are not strong enough to, to re-bend the plate, and the plate is, um, uh, it is still warped, and it won't work. And I think it's just kind of dumb luck that I, that I discovered this, and even more crazy luck that it's hopefully going to work, and hopefully consistently, I hope it will. Um, the owner's gonna have to come, she's gonna test it out, she's gonna go behind me, and again, I've got uh, my test stitching. I've got a nice long straight stitch. It is, uh, let's change our angle here just a bit. It is nice and consistent. It's balanced. And I'm hoping that it will last. That it will that'll be basically be, uh, you know, it'll, it'll be uh, stable is what I'm looking for here. So now the screws down up here, they're nice and snug at the top, but the top isn't where it was bent. Down here is where it got bent. Now, the screws are attaching, and they're not loose. They're not, you know, you could shake this thing, and they're not going to pop off. They're not that loose. But they are basically engaged with the body of the machine, but without, you know, torquing down this, this plate. And for some odd reason, it seems to work. So, we're going to find out. <laughs> we, we will find out uh, soon enough if, in fact, the, um, if the owner is pleased with it, and if this machine will consistently so once again uh you know we're getting to a point here where even though <clears throat> yes there's a crack in the hand wheel the pressure bar is tired the spring is tired i don't have one to replace it but this this was not the machine's fault this is where someone went in and did not respect and did not listen to what the machine was saying and this is true whether you're turning a knob or pushing a lever. I know I sound like you guys are tired of hearing me say this. Please resist that temptation. If you're not sure how, in fact, sometimes when you when you want to remove a plate, it may not come out because there's a there's a hard connection that you that you're going to have to undo. In this case, it wasn't. But again, it it didn't want to come out. And when something on a machine does not move, it's either stuck because of old oil, it's broken, or it's connected to something. These machines speak to you. You have to learn to listen to them. Uh, many of us have gotten so used to hearing beeps and computer codes, we forget that analog tools, you know, we, you, if, if you listen closely and pay enough attention and go with, go with intention, cautious intention, hopefully you won't break them. And apparently someone did, and I'm hoping that this, that this fix will allow this sewer to keep using this machine because the machine is a just an all metal beast in many respects. Like all the machines that I show on the channel, <clears throat> with the exception of those hybrids I've shown all of you. Uh, you know, these machines can keep going. It's very unusual to wear them out. This one has a worn presser bar spring, which is, I think I've only ever seen one in the whole 10 years I've been doing this, you know. But again, Please remember that when a machine, when anything on a machine is not moving the way you think it should, you kind of want to stop and just set things down, scratch your head, walk away, because I have to do that sometimes when I'm trying to learn something new, and see if you can listen. Listening will save you a lot of grief and a lot of aggravation. So tomorrow, the, the owner is going to come pick up the machine. Uh, we're going to have it set up and she will sew on it and she will decide if those stitches that I have now gotten the machine to make, if those are up to her standards. Uh, let's see if I can get a little bit more light here. There we go. Yeah, hopefully these, um, these stitches will please the owner. And you know, as I've mentioned many times, Folks, I really want these machines to stay in service as long as possible. I want them to um, to keep going. I don't restore machines for museums. I, that would be a fascinating endeavor. And there's there's one that I would hope, hopefully one day get to restore. It doesn't belong to me. But I like 
keeping really strong, solid machines in people's hands so that they can keep making things because sewing machines are happiest when they're being used. And I'm hoping that the owner will be happy to use this one going forward. Thanks for watching everyone. Words to the wise. Uh, sometimes you just get lucky and, and, and I don't know, we'll see, we'll see how it turns out. And, um, if the owner's happy, I will try to remember to report back and let you all know. Thanks for watching.